Oh, and if we want to look to the future, I don't mean the thousand years or 10,000 years, but the really far future, what can we begin to say about the possible status of human beings in the universe? That's an interesting speculation. We know, for example, that our sun will last another five billion years. So I don't think that's going to be the terminal point for humankind. But when we look at primates and particularly uh, humanoids, uh, we can see that uh, their lifetime on the planet Earth has not been all that long. Mm -hmm. uh, the change seems to come fairly rapidly. Uh, can you imagine uh, human beings in 10,000 years from now? Uh, we suppose that they would be a lot smarter because there would be a, a lot more uh, information available uh, through libraries, through computer databases, and so on. Will the human brain be that much smarter in 10,000 years? Uh, how many people do you know that are as smart as Aristotle was? <laughs> I don't think mm -hmm. there's a demonstrable improvement. There's just more people now. Uh, there are more smart people now than there were in Greece, but I'm not sure that they were any smarter. And in 10,000 years, uh, they may not be. But think what is going on now with respect to genetic engineering. Mm -hmm. Uh, what will human beings know? Could they be raising a smarter generation? Would those genetic changes, in fact, be producing another species so that Homo sapiens, what would be left, would be preserved carefully in zoos? <laughs> For me, the idea of extrapolating as far as 10 million years and supposing that human beings are still on the face of this planet uh, is, uh, uh, I, f I find it increasingly dubious to believe. To believe that you can even speculate, or what you're saying is that you think in, within 10 million years there won't be such things as human beings, that because of the back history you're reasonably confident in making that prediction that within 10 million years there won't be such things as human beings. So changed that you would probably not recognize mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. if, if there is any creature filling that particular niche. But certainly to use the far, far future before the sun would burn out and everything would be destroyed here, that if there were sentient creatures still around, would you see them a uh, uh, going beyond Earth and uh, populating the galaxy? Or wh what, what hi gr grand historical sense can you project? As one begins to make pre projections, it becomes very scary. In 1960, a, an interesting formula was proposed uh, about the population of the Earth. And it showed the population of the Earth going infinite in 2026. <laughs> now, it was absolutely uncanny because in the 1990s, that particular prediction was exactly on track. Hmm. Now, it would be very interesting to think about the year 2026 as it approaches the doomsday date <laughs> uh, to get the human population to expand at that rate, you would sort of have to say, well, if it takes one woman nine months to produce a baby, three women can do it in three months <laughs> and right. to get the population. Right. To go up. But, but it is uh, all of these kind of projections about population, about energy use, and so on. Uh, we're in a tremendous race to be able to get ahead of that curve to a place where we still have enough energy, enough human resources left to be able to think about things like going into space. We might have a, a small segment that can dream those dreams about what you could do in 30 years from now, 
but what will the world population be like in 30 years? What will the energy be like? Mm. What will the global warming be like? Uh, this is why I find it almost impossible to make a pro projection for 10,000 years, and even totally less likely to go 10 million years. And yet what's so fascinating is that if we look at human history that we know, recorded history is just a very few thousand years, 4,000 years, 5,000 years of real recorded history. And, and compare that to the, to the time span of, of previous generations. Dinosaurs lived for many tens of millions of years. Uh, and, and human history is just these few thousand years of recorded history and you know, maybe a couple hundred thousand years of, of, of biological history. This is because we, evolution, has now crossed the Lamarckian divide. Mm. That is to say, as Lamarck supposed, that acquired characteristics could be inherited. Which was rejected totally from a biological perspective. But from a cultural perspective, right. we are now getting much more information. Our brains can store more information than our DNA can. Mm -hmm. And with, when you add libraries and other sources, what is moving culture along is an evolutionary process whose timetable is so hugely faster than the slow process of evolution, of mutations, of making these slow and gradual steps. That would seem to indicate that there's something special about our time and our generations of human beings that kind of anti the mediocrity principle that this explosion of culture is really changing the characteristic of this one species on Earth, very different than any other. That's a very interesting observation because it does tell us that crossing that divide is a, a temporal milestone that changes things. That never happened before. Right. As far as we know, certainly on Earth. Right. And that puts a real um, uh, chink in the, in the ability to make projections for the human future based on what we've seen in the biological future of, of, of previous kinds of species. For example, my anthropologist friends say that if you look at Neanderthal, mm -hmm. which had a relatively short lifetime, uh, some hundreds of thousands of years, that somehow their tool use at the beginning of that period was the same as their tool use at the end. You could not, oh. if you were back there studying those people, have made any predictions at all about what civilization was going to be in the 21st century. Again, that is indicating that the, that the time that the times that we're in during these few hundred years, especially, is something very unique, and it's it's hard to know where it's because our progress is 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 exactly the opposite of that. The opposite of not changing over hundreds of thousands of years, we're changing every year and uh, you know with computers we live in very exciting and very dangerous times